Welcome to Continuing Mobile Education for Emergency Medical Services Providers. This is Block 11, Pacemakers, Episode 1, Pacemakers and Electrophysiology. After viewing this episode, participants will review the normal electrophysiology of the heart. Participants will review the types of pacemakers, and finally, participants will review how pacemakers work. Conduction of electrical activity in the heart begins at the sinoatrial node, which is located in the right atrium, just next to the superior vena cava, where blood returns to the heart. Electrical activity begins from there, and as it travels through the right and left atria, it causes depolarization and therefore contraction of the atria. This is commonly seen as a P wave on the EKG. When electrical activity reaches the AV node or atrioventricular node, it then pa passes through the bundle of Hiss and then down the right and the left bundles. This allows electrical transmission to occur to the base of the heart, which allows the base of the heart to contract first, therefore pushing blood back towards the pulmonary outlet as well as the aortic outlet. The contraction of the ventricles is what we see as QRS and then T wave depolarization on the EKG. Electrical conduction is initiated at the SA node. It passes through the right and left atria, which causes depolarization and contraction of the atria. This is noted by the P wave on the EKG. Electrical conduction continues at the AV node down the left and right bundles. This allows for conduction to reach the base of the heart, allowing for contraction of the ventricles, pumping blood toward the pulmonary and aortic outlets. This is noted by the QRS complex and the T wave on the EKG. Pacemakers are devices that provide um, electrical activity to stimulate um, the natural contraction of the heart um, when the body's intrinsic pacemakers do not properly function. Um, this typically is either because the um, heart rate is too slow or um, the initiation of um, the heart's normal contraction is absent. Uh, pacemakers uh, work by sensing the heart's um, intrinsic electrical potential. If there's not initiation of this potential after a set period of time, uh, pacemakers deliver um, a pacer fire that initiates contraction of the heart through um, depolarizing um, either the atrium or the ventricle. Individuals with a pacemaker may have one or more leads from the pacemaker generator itself that pass down through the superior vena cava and into the right atrium. In this case, this lead would simulate firing of the sinoatrial node. This lead would simulate firing of the atrioventricular node and cause ventricular contraction. The firing of the atrial and ventricular leads in sequence will provide normal electrical conduction of the heart. The actual de pacemaker device is normally located within the left side of the chest wall. Um, they can be located in other locations depending on any underlying um, anatomical pathology. Um, they are typically round or rectangular in shape and can be palpated just underneath the skin or just underneath the um, muscle of the chest wall. Pacemakers stimulate or initiate electrical conduction of the heart in the setting of a slow heart rate or where conduction is absent. Pacemakers can have one or more leads from the pacemaker generator. One would be in the right atrium to intervene in the SA node and one could be in the right ventricle to intervene in the AV node. Pacemakers are normally found on the left side of the chest wall although it is possible for alternate locations if underlying anatomical barriers exist. Some common misconceptions of pacemakers is that they're firing all the time versus part of the time. Um, we have to realize that sometimes there's pacemakers that are demand pacemakers and only go off when they're needed. Um, 
And then that there's different types of pacemakers and some pacemakers might be just firing off in the top part of the heart which controls the SA node or they might be just uh, firing off in the ventricular part of the heart. So um, it's kind of a big unknown. Some people are not really sure what a pacemaker does. They just think that it controls the heart completely and it might only be controlling one portion of it. The uh, two major types of pacemakers are um, the uh, fixed rate pacemaker or the demand mediated pacemaker. The fixed rate pacemaker provides a set consistent um, pacer fire at a uh, predetermined interval or pre-programmed interval. Um, this occurs regardless of any um, intrinsic electrical activity of the heart. Um, demand mediated pacemakers actual, actually sense the intrinsic electrical activity of the heart. If there is a delay in this intrinsic electrical activity over a set or a predetermined period of time, the pacemaker will fire and initiate um, electrical activity and contraction of the heart. The strength of an asynchronous pacemaker is that it does not require um, sensing of the intrinsic electrical activity of the heart. Um, the theoretical risk from this is that it may uh, potentiate um, a dysrhythmia depending on the time that it fires um, as it may occur at a time that the heart is vulnerable. The benefit of demand mediated pacemakers are that it can sense the intrinsic activity of the heart. Um, if the heart is able to uh, provide its own intrinsic electrical activity to initiate contraction then the pacemaker will not fire. Um, if it does not um, initiate an intrinsic um, elec uh, intrinsic electrical potential um, over a set specified period of time the pacemaker will fire and provide for contraction of the heart muscle. There are two types of pacemakers a fixed rate pacemaker, which does not require sensing of the intrinsic electrical conduction. It fires at a constant rate, regardless of intrinsic electrical conduction. It is possible to fire when the heart is vulnerable. The demand-mediated pacemaker monitors the intrinsic electrical conduction of the heart rate. It fires only when the heart rate falls below a predetermined rate or in the absence of electrical conduction. There's a theoretical risk of being able to feel um, the pacer firing from the actual pacemaker, um, but this, the current that's delivered through it is relatively low. Patients, um, pacemakers should not provide any sort of risk to the EMS provider. There's potential for interaction between external defibrillators and pacemakers. Um, typically, um, external defibrillators have the potential to cause malfunction of the pacemaker. For this reason, the uh, defibrillating pads or paddles should be um, kept outside of the range of the pacemaker um, as um, any electrical activity that is delivered through the pads may cause damage to the pacemaker. Defibrillator pads should be kept 10 centimeters away from the pacemaker to minimize any electrical current that may be passed into the pacemaker from the defibrillator. EMS providers should know um, patients with pacemakers, the uh, important thing to do is to see if you can get any information from the patient themselves as to what type of pacemaker was put in and when it was put in and in the last time that it, it was checked and if there were any problems with it at that point, which typically there shouldn't be because uh, they should most likely fix those, fix those right away. To prevent possible interactions with external defibrillators, place pads 10 centimeters away from the device. In addition, attempt to gain as much information about a patient's pacemaker, including type of pacemaker, when it was put in, and last time of evaluation. After viewing this episode, participants will review the normal electrophysiology of the heart. Participants will review the types of pacemakers, and finally, participants will review how pacemakers work.